Welcome again. Today we consider 3.4.1. Outline how soil systems integrate aspects of living systems. The system, an assemblage of parts and the relationships between them, which together constitute an entity or a whole. The soil is indeed very much a system, for it is a collection of parts which include different kinds of particles, living components, and non-living components. It is also an open system, one in which both matter and energy are exchanged with the surroundings. The very formation of soil involves the bringing of matter by wind deposition and by the forces of weathering acting on bare rock and by pioneers like lichens and mosses and ferns penetrating the bare rock with their roots and giving rise to soil. Soil also harbors a range of biotic components. Some of these components take matter out of the soil, process the matter, and then return it to the soil. A range of decomposers act on the organic matter that enters the soil. Animals also add organic components to the soil in their feces and in their urine. Trees extract organic components from the soil. But the soil is also acted upon by the abiotic components of the environment. Precipitation infiltrates into the soil and percolates downwards. Often this precipitation runs off and erodes some of the topsoil, taking it into the aquatic environment. Yet in other cases, ions are washed from top layers of the soil to lower layers and into groundwater. This is known as leaching. The soil itself is host to a complex ecosystem. Much of the living components of soil are microscopic. Bacteria teem in the upper layers of the soil, working to decompose the rich organic matter. Bacteria also extract nitrogen from the air, and some bacteria in waterlogged soil returns nitrogen to the air. A quick test would show that topsoil produces carbon dioxide and extracts oxygen. For many of the bacteria that decompose the organic matter are aerobic or oxygen consumers and with oxygen as their input the output of respiration is carbon dioxide. It is useful to use a model to understand how the soil connects to the systems around it. But it's important to note that any model comes with its restrictions. What are some of the restrictions in using a model such as this to understand how the soil works as a system alongside the other systems? Here you can see the hydrological cycle operating within this closed system. As the soil is fed by the model precipitation and it also releases moisture by evaporation and evapotranspiration. Carbon dioxide is released and oxygen is consumed by the biotic components within the soil. Nutrients are extracted by these moss and by these plants. The soil is indeed a system among systems. 
and it is subject to many inputs, and from the soil arise many outputs. There are also several transfers occurring within the soil, and there are also transformations occurring within the soil. Consider this summary diagram or model before putting together your own model or diagram to show how the soil connects to all of the systems around it. The soil as a system among systems. Include in your diagram examples of transfers, transformations, inputs, and outputs. Perhaps your diagram had more detail than this one, or perhaps it had less. But this is just one quick way of putting together a model to understand the role of the soil in supporting life on Earth, and how the soil as a system interacts with the systems around it.